Since the beginning of civilization, the world has been full of unknown things. Due to their existence, the balance of mankind's peaceful life has been upset. However, no matter how advanced our technology, no matter how great our scientific breakthroughs, there will always be anomalies that cannot be explained. We don't know where they come from, or what their purpose is. These questions plague mankind, and affect our daily lives. It's because of this that we founded the SCP Foundation, an organization dedicated to containing anomalous items, individuals, and phenomena. The SCP Foundation is committed to maintaining the normalcy of the world so that people may live free of fear. While ordinary people live in the sunlight, we must fight anomalies in the shadow. We must prevent them from being exposed to the public so that people may live in a rational and ordinary world. We secure. We contain. Oh boy, am I looking forward to this one. Hello everyone and welcome to SCP Secret Files. In this game we're going to be playing as Carla Stana, a new employee at the SCP Foundation, researching, analyzing, cataloging and archiving various anomalies and events within the Foundation. If that sounds like fun, well, you're in luck, because if you're watching this video, the game has now been released. The links and the details are going to be down below in the description for you. Based on the demo that I played a couple of months ago, this is going to be a great deal of fun and I really hope you enjoy it. If you do, leave this video a like, leave your thoughts down below in the comments either way though, because I love reading through them. This is SCP Secret Files, and we're about to reach our floor. Alright, I'm in control. And here we are, I have arrived. First day on the job. And there you go, the mission statement of the SCP Foundation as they let us in. I am very much looking forward to this. I really do hope you enjoy it. So, first things first, I think what we need to do is pick up our pass at the security office. I guess that's here. Wait, is this it? Uh, okay. There's no one here? <laughs> A little bit lax for security, especially in SCP site, but uh, all right. Let's just let ourselves in. Here we go. Okay. Room 914, that's what we're looking for. All right. Well, let's poke around a few others first. Can I not open this? Looks filled to the brim with boxes, files, folders, God knows what. Yeah, the demo really impressed me, so uh, I've been looking forward to this ever since. Can't go into 908 either? Ah, oh, that's a shame. What about 909? No? Ah, all right. So, 914? Just round the corner. Okay. Let's see then. Alright. Just got to match up the fingerprints. Okay. We're authorized. And we're in. Already, I'm liking the level of detail. So this is our office, is it? Pokey little place, but I could get used to it. Alright, so the card goes in. And I hop onto the PC, apparently. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm Carla Stana. I was born on the 25th of May, 1989. Education, MIT. And I'm in the archive department. It all looks good. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yep, yeah, sure. I'm just going to agree without reading. <laughs> like everyone does. Okay, so, before starting your work, please allow us to introduce you to the software used in the archive department. Okay. Each day, your superior will assign tasks to the mission module. When there's a new task, the button will blink red to remind you. Okay. Communication within the site relies primarily on the instant messaging system, where information is processed using level 2 encryption. All right. Uh, training is an effective means of information sharing within the Foundation. New employees must first participate in new employee training before they may begin work. Sounds like that's something I'm going to have to do then. Um, okay. We've got information of all the sites around the world, and we can view the information at any time. And that's that. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's just click Site 19. Was it Site 19 that I was at in the demo? I think that was Site 74, Pony Station, right? I suppose we'll be heading back there at some point. And then we can go to the various other areas. 
Cool. All right. Uh, looks like friends. All right. Here we go. Well, there you go. There's, this is the instant messaging service, and it looks like I've sort of walked in mid-conversation. They're typing pretty fast. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up reading it out aloud. Hopefully you can see it. Our group's got a new member today, says Zoe. How about introducing yourself? Oh, I've got a choice. So I can either say, morning everyone, or hiya friends, good morning. Well, you know, it's, it's my first day. Let's keep it formal, at least for now. Morning everyone. My name is Carl Astana, and you can call me Carl. I graduated from MIT with a double major in biology and philosophy. Impressive. <laughs> right? MIT. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Hmm. It seems MIT is not popular here, or is it just me, or do I sense a hint of jealousy? Uh, let's go with the top one. No, 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 it's not like that. Not targeting you specifically, it's just these prestigious graduates. Right, the Foundation seeks them out and then throws them all in the Archive Department, apparently. Have we all forgotten about Jonathan? Who... hmm. Who's Jonathan? Okay, he graduated from Harvard or Stanford and... <laughs> He's trying to interject with Rick and Morty. Uh, the tragedy he went through was inevitable. What tragedy? Am I going to naively say how dangerous could dealing with paperwork possibly be? Yes, I think I will. Jonathan lost his left hand because he breached protocol and touched SCP-247. I don't really want to recall those details. Hmm. <laughs> Stuart's in his own little world, I think. <laughs> I like this. Yeah, we're just getting in on the banter between them all. Relief station. That's what Gen thinks this is. <laughs> I think you scared me. Oh, we got Chuck. Okay. Ah, right. Uh, Chuck, I think, might be the leader of the department. Yeah. And it seems like he's giving us a telling off for gossiping. All right, looks like Zoe's getting a file. All right. Yeah, so he's, he's dishing out all the work for the day, I think. Uh, so what are we going to get? We're next, right? Oh, really? That's all? Uh, what's, uh, what's my job, Director Hour? We need to review, organize, catalog, and modify all existing containment archives, but there's no need to hurry, young man. You'll need to attend the new employee onboarding training first before you can begin working at the Foundation officially. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, Director. Again, just keeping it formal. It is my first day. Uh, hey. I'm honored to be given the chance to work here at the Archives Department. Young man, this place is not what you think. You must abandon your past self and start again from zero if you hope to learn to survive here. No one will take care of you. You must demonstrate your own ability. Understood. Yeah, I don't really think I, I know what I've signed up for. Apparently I'm going to suffer. Prepare a paper bag for the vomit to come. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this out of this game. I'm, I'm liking it very much, actually. Right. Remember, he says, stay sane and always in awe. Looks like I've got a system notice here. Right. Um, okay, well, I've got to enter the training system, so let's do it. All right. It was with Raymond Ham, right? So, join conference. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Jason Carter is a death row inmate. Good stop. In exchange for clemency, 
He has agreed to work with the SCP Foundation for 30 days. Right. Upon completion of his work, he will be a free man. Jason Carter is now D-503. Right. And he's got 30 days to survive. I don't think he's going to make it, personally, but here we are. Day one. All right. Cool. All right, what have we got here? Okay. Hey. <laughs> All right, just kind of thrown in here. Uh, so we're playing as a D-Class. That's different. What exactly are we tasked to do? Equip this. All right. I like the way this looks. It looks different than the demo. I think each of the chapters of this game are going to have their own style. So, right. Collect? What's this? We've got a scanner or something? Okay. Feeling a little sort of alien isolation. <laughs> uh, what are we scanning for exactly? Alright. An elevator? Where are we going? Down or up? Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to survive too long as a class, quite honestly. I don't think he's going to make his 30 days. D-503 was given no clear instruction of the task to be completed. Brilliant. He must find them out for himself. Okay. Seems I'm in the middle of a desert. Okay, alright, we've got various things pinging on this thing now. We've got to collect the waste, apparently. <laughs> alright, okay. <laughs> All right, well, presumably these uh, red markers are the waste, right? So let's just head to this closest one and see what we can do. All right, so it's Q to get out, is it? There you go. What is that? It's a jerry can, isn't it? you got to hold it down to collect it. Okay. Looks like we've got a limit of 100 kg. That was 30 kg. That's quite heavy, really. Uh, it's a plastic petrol tank. Hard to decompose even after a hundred years. One of the more stubborn pieces of waste. Alright. And do I chuck that in the back? Hmm, not sure. Oh, it's already in there. Okay, right. Alright, well let's just go to the next one. A little bit different, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, I can't see anything on the horizon. It's just more desert, really. Okay, struggling a little bit getting up this sand dune, but I've found something. Is that a tire? Yeah, we've got a wheel here. Alright, how much does this weigh? Okay, that's 40 kilograms. Discarded tires. It's filled with sand. After vehicles became the main form of transportation, discarded tires began to grow in numbers. Okay, so that's in the back as well. Good stuff. I don't know if I'm going to be able to carry all of this in one run, honestly. Let's see. Let's go over here. Oh! Okay, that was intentional. <laughs> you know, back before I was a death row inmate in a D-Class, I used to be a stunt driver. Yeah, two wheels means nothing to me. Is this a barrel? Uh, yeah, looks like it. This one's presumably going to be quite heavy. Very heavy. Actually, it's over the limit. It's a damaged tin drum. Having once protected hazardous liquid from leaking, it was discarded upon the completion of its mission. Right. Strange. I'm not familiar with this particular SCP. Maybe you guys are in the comments. If you are, let me know about it, alright? I'm sure we're going to be told exactly what we're playing through at some point, but yeah, this one doesn't ring a bell so far. Right, so there's a couple more pieces of waste, it looks like, but uh, I think we need to go back to the incinerator before we collect them. So, yeah. Back over here. Alright. Oh, shit! Oh, it's, it, it's okay. As I said before, stunt driver. <laughs> Are we... Okay, yeah, we drive up there. To deposit the waste. Seems like we're in the middle of nowhere, though. So where did, where did the waste come from? Okay, so the petrol tank, the tires, the tin drum. Pull down the lever. All right. And down it goes. Okay. 
So that's all getting incinerated. Right. Hmm. Okay. So we're out in the middle of nowhere with a load of waste, but there's also this giant incinerator. This was D-503's first day of work. Weird. SCP protocol mandates that D-503 now undergo a psychological evaluation. Right. Okay. And we're back in the room. Okay, so this is the evaluation, is it? It's a level 2 mental test. Okay. <laughs> Alright, um... Let's see. Nice. Okay. There you go. Easy as that. There's another one. All right. Uh, let's put this one down here. All right. Easy as that. I did it in 51 seconds, it seems. Not the high score, but never mind. <laughs> okay. So I guess psychologically, I'm doing all right. So I just need to do that 29 more times. Okay. Here's my food for the day. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, they don't treat D-classes very well, generally. I guess I'm going to eat it off the floor. Okay. Well, we've been trucking. I've had the evaluation. I've eaten. Now we just need to sleep, I suppose. On the chair? Oh, no. What a strange facility. Right, okay. This was the first day D-503 psychological data was collected. Nice. You're probably wondering, how can this job earn freedom for a death row inmate? Well, are you going to tell us? 7457. I don't know that one. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Raymond Ham from Site 83. Welcome to today's training conference. Today, I'm going to share with you a little project I've been working on called SCP-7457. All right. The desert you saw just now is SCP-7457. D-503 is a volunteer who we invited to help us learn more about this desert. Hmm. Prior to the Foundation's involvement with SCP-7457, 329 people went missing in this area. All right. As a precaution, we have introduced lockdown measures as we attempt to find the cause of these disappearances. As everyone here is new to the Foundation, it will be good for you to learn about SCP-7457. Let me explain how it works. All right. Before we get started, are there any questions? No, oh, looks like there are. Dr. Ham, I'm Will Barton. Third Special Squad, Site 86. Hello, Will. Before I came here, I thought I had a basic understanding of the Foundation. I've heard of these anomalies, but only in terms of human anomalies. I had no idea that SCP-7457 was a desert. How do we begin to make sense of this? That's a good question, Will. All the unexplained phenomena we are monitoring are being labeled anomalies. Human anomalies regional anomalies, artifact anomalies, and various other phenomena beyond our control. The work of the Foundation is to isolate these anomalies and prevent the public from, shall we say, experiencing them? Hmm. Okay, next question. Hello, Dr. Hem. I'm Mark Harris, a research intern from Site-27. In the video, we saw D-503 picking up garbage in the desert. We did. Why did it do that? And what does this have to do with anomalies? Did he just call okay, me Mark. it? What I can tell you now is that everything you see is part of SCP-7457. SCP anomalies can be a little difficult to understand at first. Just know that it or they have their own rules. Hmm. Perhaps you'll understand what I mean once we finish watching the video. All right. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're going back to it. Yep, a week's passed. It's now day eight. The first week was fairly normal. However, there was an interesting occurrence on the eighth day. Is that right? Okay, 23 days to go. We need to get trucking again. We need to collect more waste, right? 
Okay, so there you go. Suited and booted. Got my scanner. I suppose at this point I know exactly what I'm doing, don't I? So where's my bedroom in all this? Like, <laughs> maybe the room rotates or something like that, and I just don't know. Right, okay. Let's have a look at what happened. Yeah. It's probably not going to end up going too well for me. Oh? Oh, is it night? Oh, okay. <laughs> Still, a hundred kilograms of waste to collect. Uh, looks like there's only three this time. Let's see, let's go for this one right ahead of us, shall we? That seems like it might be the furthest away, and then we can sort of circle back to the incinerator afterwards. Okay, oh, two wheels again! I just can't get away from my stunt driving days. Oh, I see it. What is this? Okay. Oh, okay. What the? Ooh. Okay, is it is it safe? I don't know. Right, I, I'm, I'm going to collect it from a, a bit of a distance, really. Right, that's 110 kilograms by itself. It's a spindle of thick black cable that's wound too tightly to see what's inside. It's much heavier than it looks, and nobody knows why. It takes a lot of effort to carry. Right, so that by itself has to be incinerated. It was weird. It was very weird. It was like wires and cables. Okay, um, well, back to the incinerator, and then I guess we've got to do the other two. Although I didn't before. Maybe we just need to do 100 kilograms a day and then call it quits. Oh, careful, careful. <laughs> I'm reminded quite a lot of uh, the first Mass Effect. Yeah, driving feels a little bit like that. So the 110 kilogram black spindle of wires and cables, that's going to get incinerated. Let's go. D-503 had completed his task. However, he did not realize that he had already encountered his first anomaly. Was that like moaning or groaning that I just heard? Huh, okay. That was his first anomaly, was it? Right, well, time for another evaluation, right? Okay, let's see. Uh, select three pictures with a triangle. Okay, well, there's one. Wet floor. And then there's one there. Yeah? Hey, okay. Good stuff. Three pictures that calculation results are equal to five. Okay. One plus one plus one plus one plus one. Um... 5 plus 0, that, uh, that one. Hey! Okay, brilliant. Ah, still not the high score, but not too far off. D257, you mathematician, you. Alright. What is it, another, another burger? So, 22 days to go. Wait, I don't get fed today? Oh, that's rough. Right, okay, well, time to sleep, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if the room rotates or the whole building rotates or something, but that must be how it works, right? That night, D-503's psychological data showed abnormal fluctuations. Is that right? Analysis tells us that D-503 is dreaming. Ah. And whispering by the sounds of it. Unfortunately, though, we have no way of knowing what he dreamed of that night. Ah. But we do, because we're playing as him, right? So is this a dream caused by the anomaly that I dealt with? Is that a phone booth? Looks like a phone booth. Oh, okay. 
All right, back to the training session. The eighth day marked a significant turning point. The start of SCP-7457's impact on D-503. Are there any questions before we go on? Hello, Dr. Ham. I'm Spencer Jones from the Special Operations Department of Site-21. Hello, Spencer. It's still unclear as to why D-503 needs to pick up all of this trash. Yeah. If you wanted to monitor his psychological response to SCP-7457, why not just leave him out in the desert? Why assign him these tasks when there are already psychological evaluations taking place? Good point, Spencer. Okay. Our analysis has indicated that SCP-7457 produces a new cluster of trash every 8 minutes and 37 seconds. Oh, I see. If waste collection is not done regularly, all that trash may soon flow into our world. It is worth noting, though, that the quantity of waste created here pales in comparison to the amount produced by humans. However, it still has the potential to become a significant problem in the future. By assigning these tasks to D-503, we can monitor his reactions while also containing the trash. Mm. There is another reason, but we will get to that one later. Oh, Dr. Ham. Is it not the case that the Foundation is exaggerating the importance of a minor issue before the issue is fully understood? <sighs> okay, everyone. I must emphasize that behind us is the general public, who are wholly unaware of any of this. Hmm. Being meticulous and maintaining a serious attitude is essential at the SCP Foundation. Any oversight or underestimation of the enemy may result in disaster. Thank you, Dr. Ham. I understand. Good. Let's move on. All right. The effects of SCP-7457 on D-503 became most obvious on day 15 of the test. Is that right? Due to the conditions that day, we were only able to track his movements after recovering data from his radar. All right. It was definitely a bad day. Perhaps the worst. Even for a death row inmate. <laughs> and we're going to play through it. Yep, day 15. We're going to play through it by the looks of it. I quite like this as an introduction to the Foundation, Anomalies, and, well, the game. Right. Yeah, wires and cables just leave this stuff. Alright, well, yep. I guess I'm going to collect this as well. D-503 found a radar that perfectly resembled his own. Really? Is it my own, though? That's a bit worrying if it is. A World War II type. There's a lot of abrasion on the display as well as the handle. D-503 didn't seem to think much of it. Right, just sling it in the back and continue, I suppose, right? Yeah. Alright, well, it looks like there's one more bit of waste. There it is. Aside from that, fairly simple day. Wait, 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 wait. That's another spindle, isn't it? Ooh, boy. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, when I get close, they retreat so I can grab it, collect it, and incinerate it, I guess. Okay. How much does this one weigh? About a hundred kilograms. Wow, okay. Holy moly. Okay, so in it goes, and back to the incinerator we go. Hopefully without doing any mad jumps or, or two wheels or anything like that, you know? Let's just do it a little bit more calmly this time, yeah? <laughs> okay. There we go, there we go. Just a little on the brake, yep. Little gas here and there. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> it's pretty tough to control. Okay. And all of that is going to get incinerated. Persistent adverse physiological reactions proved to be a challenge for D503. Oh, yeah? He still managed to complete his work on day 15. I'm hearing the moaning again. There's something up with that spindle. That spindle's alive. But then he encountered an incident. An incident? A sandstorm. Oh, right. Well, that's new. D-503 
503 walked in the sandstorm for a long time, but he couldn't seem to find his way back. Oh boy, so here I am, out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, what have we got here? Cables? Wires? Well, there is something over there. But I don't know if I like the idea of following this, to be honest, because, I, I, yeah, I think there's like a network of wires and cables underneath this entire desert that's forming all this waste. That's the real anomaly, I think. Right, I'm, I'm not seeing anything else here. I think I've got to head for uh, that place up there. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that stuff a wide berth, just in case I get dragged underground or something like that, you know? So far, so good. I'm just, you know, checking my surroundings, making sure nothing's following me or emerging out of the sands. Where is this place? This isn't where I start, is it? No, 24. Okay. D-503 managed to find a site just as he was beginning to grow weak with exhaustion. A site he was not familiar with. Okay. Uh, yeah, this this doesn't look right. It, this really doesn't look right. Who's that? They're in an orange jumpsuit. They that might be another D class. Is is that me? I, mm. Oh, the dream. This is his dream. Right. It is, it's a phone booth. There's a phone up there on the cliff. I... Lie? Lie. What's a lie? Right, okay. This is cool. And this is creepy. It is a horror game after all. He's still there. He's just hooked up to all these cables and wires and... Right, do I want to check him? Oh god. Oh! Look at that! Uh... You might want to back away now. This was a mistake. What's up with that phone booth? experienced a call from an unknown voice <gasps> Ooh. that was a cool effect oh, okay approximately 13 hours later right a visibly trembling d503 returned to site 8 well at least he made he it back immediately performed a psychological evaluation I don't blame you. To be honest, I think he needs one after that. What was that? Right, so what's it going to be this time? Ooh. Okay, start the test. Connect to... Oh, okay. Major fluctuations can now be observed in D-503's physiological data. Whoa. It's like I'm getting pulled into another reality or something. I don't know. Maybe just strange hallucinations? Visions? The results of the psychological evaluation were so troubling, we had to abort the mission. Okay. He didn't take too kindly to that. <laughs> Pull? Alright. D-503 was able to break away from the Foundation's control. Ah. Okay. He has seen the test results of other level D personnel. That's right. None of the level D personnel at SCP-7457 have ever been able to leave this desert. A D-Class being sent to an anomaly to go die? What's new? Oh boy. Right, okay, well I've got I've got the truck still. I can barely see what's going on, but 
Right, let's just drive through the sandstorm and get the hell out of here. I don't really know where I'm going to be going, though. I'm just going to go straight ahead of me. I might find another site. Where is this desert, by the way? Oh, that's another one of those black spindles, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, shit. Don't tell me that's it. He didn't die from that, did he? Oh, no. No, he's, he's not dead yet. What the? Where the hell is this? There's a city out in the desert? In the middle of nowhere? D-503. But who was calling? An unknown voice, right? Huh. Alright, there's a, a dumpster half buried in the sand. Where the hell are we going? Round here? Right, let, let's go around here. often believe that their fate is in their own hands. That all choices come from their own free will. Yeah. They don't realize that we humans form only a small part of this world. Out there, in the unknown world, we are as insignificant as a grain of sand in this vast desert. What the hell? Where had this been hiding this entire time? Whoa. Oh, is that... That's the phone booth, isn't it? Right in the center of... What well, seems to be like a, a web of wires and cables. And it's ringing. It is ringing. Are they... I thought they were tires to begin with. I think they're actually those black spindles. Right, yeah. What the hell is going on here? Explains the black spindles, I suppose. So they're all bodies, they're all people that have answered the call, and they're all left in the wasteland. Is that D503? Oh man. Yep, another D class is out there collecting him. And the Foundation doesn't know. The Foundation doesn't know. Right. Right, right. Before, when I burnt the spindles, I was hearing moaning, groaning, screaming of the person being burnt alive on the inside. Now I know why. Forty-eight days later, experiment participant D-722 found the radar that it belonged to D-503. Right. The radar was 31 miles away from the waste treatment facility. All the data we have came from this radar. People entering SCP-7457 will suffer varying degrees of psychological stress within an acute period. It manifests as a range of neurological and mental disorders, as well as severe and unexplained hallucinations. Right. So far, not one participant has left the desert unscathed. The Foundation has tested 31 Level D personnel in an area spanning 2,267 square miles. Wow, that's huge! Our testing continues. When you work for the Foundation, you will face various anomalies. Some can kill you, some may drive you crazy, and some will make you feel that living is worse than death. Let this be very clear. SCP-7457 is just a taste of what you will face in the future. Right. Before joining the Foundation, you were all leaders in your respective fields and industries. Researchers, special forces, FBI agents, national security experts. Well, 
SCP does not care how smart you are, how accomplished you are. It doesn't matter to them how many doctorates and titles you have. You are no different from helpless ants when confronted with these anomalies. Hmm. Remember this. It is the most important advice you will receive. Do not take risks. You will die. You are not as special as you think you are. If you encounter an anomaly, put your pride and curiosity aside. Run. Because that's the only thing you can do. God won't protect you here. <sighs> Welcome to the Foundation, rookies. <laughs> I'm Dr. Raymond Ham, and this ends the first class of our employee induction program. Cool. Thanks. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I should quit. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be a possibility, though. All right, the training course has ended. Add your comments. All right, uh, I can. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, I guess there's going to be another lesson in the future. Let's see. It was arranged. Yeah, qualified. It was smooth. Let's see. Um, it helped me. I only saw a Boy Scout instructor scaring a rookie. I didn't feel anything. No, I'm going to say good. It helped me. Yeah. I could be injected with amnestics and sent home like Jonathan. Okay, cool. Uh, back to the friends then. Hiya, Carl, says Zoe. How did it feel? Uh, well, it's either I feel a little uncomfortable or anyone got an aspirin? Uh, I feel a little uncomfortable. Let's say that. Hey, buddy, don't throw up on the floor. <laughs> That was only the beginning. That's right. That's just the first case of many in this game. Got it. Everyone here wants to teach you something, Carl. Live with it. Right. Well, it, thank you. I, I feel much better. Yeah. To join you? Okay. All right. The past hour has been torture. I don't know how the others managed to hold on. I messed up during the training session. I jumped off a cliff, fell into the icy water, and choked hard. I don't know how I even recall any of this, because I have no memory of ever visiting any cliffs or waterfalls. But it was all so real. I could even taste it in my mouth now. The foul taste of the river water. But in any case, this is my first day at the Foundation. I gotta go to the cafeteria and get something to eat. Maybe that will make my stomach feel better. So, the cafeteria. Alright. I'm liking this so far. It's a little bit different. Okay, I'm logging back on, and, well, I guess I'm going to be ready for another case to work on, right? Or maybe there's going to be another training session. Uh, let's see. Let's talk to my new friends. Okay, Chuck's handing out work again. Zoe's got a file. Okay, Gent too. Yep, okay. Uh, am I going to get my own file to work on? Stuart's got one. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Why am I being assigned to field work again, he asks. Something went wrong at Site 74. Hmm, right. Like I said, our department should be renamed Relief Station. He's asking me how I feel. Well, I'm ready for a new job. Yeah. Good. No, you misunderstood. When I said that, I mean I'm ready to leave. I'm ready to quit. I'm handing in my notice. Okay, uh, I'll do my best or leave it to me. Well, I'll do my best. That's all I can promise you. <laughs> Zoe's wishing me good luck. Good old Zoe. One thing, MIT boy. Strictly follow the regulations and do not act on your own without authorization. Thanks. I got it. This reminds me of my first mission. Wubba lubba dub dub. <laughs> more Rick and Morty, eh? Okay. Alright, let's move. Okay, so, right. I have a file now. Okay. Ah, SCP-701. This is the one from the demo, isn't it? So I've got to click the text with red underline. Right, so... Uh, looks like we're going to play some recordings here. 
<clears throat> I'm Agent Q from the Accident Investigation Department. Containment breach occurred at Pony Station and contact with the Foundation has been lost. Agent Bella Lawrence was given orders to enter Pony Station and retrieve the black box. The following is a transcript of the interview with Bella Lawrence. So as it turns out, the following is the chapter that I played in the demo. Case 2 of SCP Secret Files is SCP-701 The Hanged King's Tragedy. And for the most part, it's the same as it was in the demo, so I don't want to retread old ground in this video. What I'll suggest that you do is go and watch the demo video that I made a couple of months ago. I'll leave a link down below in the description. Maybe I can put a pop-up on the screen right now. Go and watch that, and then hopefully you'll be joining me back in part two of SCP Secret Files for more new and exciting anomalies and events. I can't wait to see what we tackle next. See you then. <laughs> A little bit lax for security, especially in SCP site. Uh, yeah, sure, I'm just gonna agree without reading. <laughs> like everyone does. Feeling a little sort of alien isolation. <laughs> Let's go over here. Oh, oh shit! Oh, it's it, it's okay. As I said before, stunt driver. Here's my food for the day. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I see it. What is this? I, ooh, okay. Was that like moaning or groaning that I just heard? Uh, yeah, this this doesn't look right. It, this really doesn't look right. Oh! Look at that! Oh no! No, he's he's not dead yet. What the? Why the hell is this? Welcome to the foundation, rookies. <laughs> I'm Dr. 